versus touching. Mm. Bop, bop. Go ahead. Bop, bop. <laughs> so, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're here with we're here at New to Hill Country. We're here with Connor Dillon. And Connor's going to talk about some fun stuff, like literally sword fighting in the park. Uh, <laughs> talk about some media production and any number of other things that we get to. Uh, just before we roll into it, just quick nod, hat tip to our sponsors, SBG Texas. Come here to train safe, train smart, mm-hmm. train fun. Mm-hmm. Um, got a great adult program, got a great kids program. I think most people when they come in my gym, particularly on the adult end, it's like, oh, that's how I wanted to learn, <laughs> you know? Like, that's that's the, one of the most common kind of expressions I get from people is like, I didn't want to get beat up to learn. I actually <laughs> wanted to just learn it, you right. know, and uh, actually learn yeah. it, <laughs> right? Not and, figuring it. <laughs> and I mean, the other big responses is like, "Wow, that really works!" Mm-hmm. Because they felt it firsthand. And they actually see it. You know, they don't have to believe it. Like, trust me, this will actually work. And you're like, mm, I don't know. All we did was kick a pad, like. <laughs> but uh, on top of all that, we have a great community that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been really just life changing and life fulfilling. You know, it's mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. awesome to be part of something great. I know New Braunfels are is all about community and helping each other, and I think we are kind of moving in that direction pretty clearly. So that's awesome. Get the kids on to new behaviors, mm-hmm. better behaviors, on top of learning how to kick some butt. You know, right. they actually <laughs> get that discipline in there, get them to be more confident. It's been pretty. Re- I find the kids teaching to be really rewarding yes, in that regard just the stuff absolutely. that parents say to us I'm, I'm kind of always blown away by the the feedback that we get like it's been this total change since they started and we're like wow really like you sure they weren't doing something else too on the side that I didn't know about like I and it feels because I, I I find it hard to take so much credit sometimes for some of the things that our parents say but um but I trust that they because they say it, I mean, not like solicited or anything. Um, we've also got Element Electrolyte Mix, um, just such a game changer. We sell it here. Um, just you put it in a bottle of water and uh, hits those hydration needs in a way that most people have really barely ever experienced. Like you've, Kaylee, you've felt it now too. Oh, like yeah. just how often do you complain about having a headache? You know what I mean? Like remember, yeah. I was just like all the time was like headache, headache. Mm-hmm. And, and that's how I felt too it's like I was talking about this with one of our gym members Mitchell and it's like he just thought it was a normal crappy day <laughs> and it's like you pop an element and it's like wait a minute it was just this electrolyte imbalance or whatever now I feel good like, and also like we all know that we need to drink a lot of water but it's it's some sort of a work like I have to oh, like yeah. remind myself to drink it's not really fun whereas mm-hmm. elements really solves that problem you want to drink that kind of mm-hmm. like just like you want to drink coffee, you want to drink those tasty drinks that is actually good for you. So it's been yeah, really great. It tastes stupid good. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's a little addictive, but yeah. All right. <laughs> well, anyways, Connor, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys for having me. How did you make it to this part of Texas? And are we always here? Or tell whatever story. Yeah. Oh, that's a that's a fun story that goes back a few years now. Actually, uh, almost fourteen years now. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, originally, uh, don't hold this against me if you're uh, born and bred Texas, but I was born in California. Oh, oh my no. God. Oh, yeah, no. I know. <laughs> All right, maybe we need to stop this podcast. Like, I didn't realize we well, well, the good Well, the good news, the good news, the good news is after three months, my parents uh, moved to Tennessee. So, oh, okay. Whew. Yeah. Whew. Whew. Didn't get all that California in you. Yeah, I, I know, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's just crazy because some of my favorite people are Californians, but yeah. Well, yeah. And you're it, not the first one. Quite a mm, lot of people were talking mm. about, actually, we are from California. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, I, I know when I first moved here uh, from Tennessee, and again, this was 07, um, my dad was running a company, and uh, he was doing two weeks in Texas and then two weeks at home. Mm. And so just about half of the year, you know, we didn't see him. Uh, and that was a lot of strain on finances and stuff like that. And so I uh, wound up sitting down and they're like, okay, we're either going to do this for another year, your brother will graduate high school, or we can go now. Mm. All right. And that, that was basically the option. Um, so I had a family meeting. Obviously, you know, we, we voted, but, you know, how much my vote counted, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but we voted and we wound up moving here. Um, and it was, we wound up moving here in August of 2007. Okay. Uh, two weeks before my you know freshman year of high school, uh, mm. and you know 
we were able to get a crappy house in the Navarro School District. Uh, and when I say crappy house, it was a house built in the 50s. It was renovated in, the I think, the late 90s. Mm-hmm. And I actually, my room, which I shared with uh, two of my brothers, mm-hmm. was a renovated garage. Mm-hmm. And I don't think there was any insulation. Oh, no. So in the winter, I had <laughs> to have, there was like a single six-inch vent. I had to have like four blankets on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so it, it was an interesting experience. Uh, the most life-changing thing about that uh, was actually the sound because this house was out in the middle of nowhere mm-hmm. and I grew up in you know, honestly it was the projects and I grew up there and so I was used to very loud uh, boom uh, booms just noises going off um, almost 24 7 like window shaking because a SUV drove too close to my house mm-hmm. and uh, I moved out there quiet and I actually had a serious, a seriously difficult time going to sleep. Um, mm. So that was interesting. Uh, anyway, so went to high school in Navarro, uh, graduated. I'll pause you for a second. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting experience for me. Is like, um, <clears throat> just you just said like you were in the you're in the projects basically. Mm-hmm. You're like in the, the ghetto area. So like when I was growing up in Dubuque, Iowa, there was a a point where they started moving a lot of people from the south side of Chicago to Dubuque, Iowa, where mm-hmm. I'm from. It was a diversity effort and stuff like that. So most of these families were black, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of these guys were coming from, like... I got to know a lot of them. Just They ended up being my friends in high school and stuff like that. And it was so fast... What was always so fascinating to me is, like... And I, not to get into a big racial discussion or whatever, but, you know, very typically you've got a lot of white people that are, you know, typically afraid of black people from an urban environment, right? And they're like... And what was really funny getting to know these guys is how afraid they were of white people. And, like, how afraid they were in particular of, like, you know, they were, like, they were so, like, panicky, almost scared about Mm -hmm. countryside stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'd be, like, you know, they would tell you a story that would, like, make your hair stand on end. You'd be, like, oh, my, oh, my God. Like, that is a war zone story. Like, you'd just be, like, you survived that? It's, like, yeah, you know, that stuff would happen all the time. And you're, like, (laughs) happen all the time? You know, like, guns popping? And you're, like, and some maybe there's some exaggeration there. I don't know. But but you're just, like, oh, my God, that's terrifying. And then they'd be, like, but they would be scared of, like, really things that were super common to me. And it always kind of, it always stayed with me, like, when you, like, perceive some area to be, like, scary. Mm -hmm. And then it's, like, people from that area might find your area scary, sort of. You know, like, in reverse, like, you're, like... I don't know. So that just always, I would always just find that so interesting. Like they were so terrified sometimes of just very little things that like I wouldn't have thought were trouble or something like, Mm -hmm. you know, just even like a school being fairly structured Mm -hmm. was like, this is like claustrophobic level uncomfortable for me. Uh, You know, like that, it was very challenging for them, that environment, which was, far more peaceful like you're mm-hmm. describing like it's so much more peaceful than what they came from but like and the most of them would adjust over time that's the great thing about human beings they mm-hmm. just adjust to things but just imagining that like you went from this loud city street which shouldn't help you sleep yeah to like quiet and it's like oh my god it's too quiet i can't yeah. ah, like and your brain can't handle it just yeah oh god. Keep, the body adapts you know but, yeah yeah, it was it was definitely an interesting experience, and you know, I I don't know how my I don't know how my brothers dealt with it. You know, mm-hmm. for me, I wound up actually like I took a floor fan and I plugged it in and I turned a floor fan on, mm-hmm. and that was what I would what mm-hmm. I would do. And so you know, in winter time, I I would have a fan going and it would be blowing on me. So you know, it being cold outside and cold in my room, I'd have <laughs> uh, four blankets and a fan blowing on me just so oh, I could wow. go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, there were definitely uh, different things that. Um, you know, I like experience wise, that was very, very, very different for me. Like where I grew up, um, and this, that school didn't have uh, football, right? So, like, that people would, football was a big thing, but the school was so small, it was a K through 12, mm-hmm. 500 students. Mm-hmm. I see. Right? Wow. And I moved to a high school, mm-hmm. ninth to 12th grade, that was 500 students. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so like for me, like I, it was really strange because I was seeing more people who were closer to me in age. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, just weird experiential thing. But over there in Chattanooga, um, basketball was the big thing. People would talk football. People would talk about mm-hmm. all, all these great touchdowns, the Patriots this, the Tennessee Titans that. Mm-hmm. But the reality was everyone was more interested in basketball. Mm-hmm. 
well, for me, when I moved here, basketball was a thing as a sport, but uh, I'm sure as you guys may have already experienced, but like football is the thing. <laughs> kind of noticed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tackle uh, football in grade school. Like, yeah. Uh, I, like second grade. Yeah, yeah and I'll, I'll, I'll say something here that will probably infuriate people, and I'm fine with saying this. But I don't think tackle football should happen until you're at least 17. Mm. Um, and, and frankly, like, I would say 18, but this is Texas, so I'm sure, you know, someone underage is, has to be able to hit someone in pads. So mm. um, that, that was something that I saw. Like, I had friends that were in high school that they played JV and then they started playing varsity. And just the between the workouts that they did and the actual playing, like one guy, he he had to have, and he was like the, the one of the star athletes. He did not play football after high school because of the injuries that he sure. sustained. Oh, totally. Right. Yeah. So like, I, he like tore an ACL. All right. Um, his hip. Uh, he actually had to have like a full hip replacement, not because it broke, but just because of something mechanically had mm-hmm. worn down from him because he was a kicker. Um, another friend, he had shot both of his knees basically and worn down, so there's hardly any cartilage. Like just these horrific injuries, and I'm from like, high school, game. from high school. Yeah, I know. That's and the... you know, like for me, I'm sitting here going like, man, like I, I could not imagine letting my kid do something like that, and then setting them up for a lifetime of pain and I don't want to say misery, but definitely pain. Sure. Right. Yeah, like right. arthritis when you're 30 is not fun. No. Um, so I'm sure someone's going to try and find me and uh, tell me like football it. is great. No, I mean, yeah, I, I, football is king for so many people. I personally am I've never, I'm not a big sports fan, so that that's an issue right there. And, yeah, I just, um, but yeah, I just, I, you know, I just can't want someone, like, even just the way I train martial arts, I'm like, it's great to be good, it's even great to mm-hmm. compete, but if competition is, like, ruining your body... Mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine, for me, unless unless we're talking about million dollar, like if you're in the NFL, I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I would take the concussions for those Multi-million paychecks. Multi-million dollar like, yeah. uh, annually. Sure. Yeah. Like we yeah. were watching uh, the Connor fight on Saturday and he lost, mm-hmm. but it's like, and people were talking about, oh, Jake Paul wants to fight him, he'll get beat. I was like, dude, I would, I would do that too if I was Jake Paul. Like, yeah. I, I, I'll fight Connor and Mayweather at the same time for a multi-million dollar yeah. fight. Like, you mean I can walk away with dollars? twenty million? Yeah, yeah, 50 like, million? yeah, I'll do it. But if you're and like, I see guys want to go out and compete in like these little like MMA things on a grass field or something mm-hmm. on YouTube, street beefs or something, <laughs> which I honestly enjoy watching. But it's like, why would you do that to yourself? Like, I'm gonna go mm-hmm. fight on a dirt field there, there's or no way concrete. they're they're not insuring you you know yeah. like any number of things could be broken like you're gonna be so mangled up for what oh i want on street beefs y'all like yeah. it's like whoopity de do you know like you yeah know. what is that what does that actually do for you <laughs> so you try to yeah. pick up a girl with that hey i want to fight on youtube yeah great <laughs> this was so, lots of people, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah right like but anyways yeah I so digress. i uh, <laughs> That, that that is a really really great point and mm. you know I, I I didn't have my fair share of street fights I actually mm. I, I don't want to say I've never been in a fight but you know um, I've probably never been in a in a fight fight um, which is good yeah which is uh, I'm, I'm glad right uh, is the it probably would not turn out I don't want to say it wouldn't turn out well for me but it, it would not be a great experience <laughs> for anyone yeah. uh, so you know that coming here and then seeing all this stuff with football that was a huge thing Um and since then, I, I've stayed around. You know, I went to Texas Lutheran University, graduated, mm-hmm. um, and uh, got a job with, and this is going to sound horrible, I'm sure, to some people, but I did get a job with my uh, parents' company. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I got hired because of my last name. I kept the job because of hard work. Cool. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I have to be well, very sad. specific about that. I, mean, I met your dad. He worked hard. I can <laughs> see it. Like, he doesn't strike me as an easy person to work for. He's going to push people, like... Yeah, yeah so he... Uh, it, I don't the job the job interview was look we've got a position here it's yours if you want it but if you want to keep it after you graduate you have to go through a workshop and get uh, this certification mm-hmm. uh, and that was the requirement mm-hmm. well I you know I I graduated a month later I got married a month later I went through this workshop at the end of the workshop uh, I had to be proctored off site uh, to reduce any kind of ethical thing mm-hmm. so I was being proctored in your brothels by um, a library and 
And um, I actually failed the test. I mm. missed, uh, I was off by one question to meet the pass fail threshold. Mm. And I went back to the office and that literally like, I just got married, I graduated college, had no other prospects, and I had to pass this test to keep my job. Mm. And I was like, uh, well, I, you know, I guess I could go back and work at HEB. Well, thank God my, my dad did have grace for me. Mm. And he's like, look, you know, tell me the, what two problems, right? That was his thing. What were the two problems that you know you got stuck on? Mm. And I would like rack through my brain. And I was like, these were the two things. Mm. I just blanked on it. I couldn't find anything mm. in my notes for it. And mm. I, these were the two problems. Worked through it. He's like, he gave me a couple more problems that were like those. Worked through it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, we'll set you up for another test. If you pass it, you know, no harm, no foul. Mm-hmm. And I think, thankfully, I passed the test nice. at that awesome. point. <laughs> uh, and since then, I, I've gotten a few other uh, certifications. Uh, so uh, I'm a HERS Raider, uh, resident instructor, uh, resident quality assurance designee. But I'm also a John C. Maxwell certified speaker, trainer, and coach. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm licensed to teach curriculum um, that he's developed over the years. And if you've never heard of John C. Maxwell, you know, uh, I don't blame you. But uh, he is um, considered uh, by a fair few people to be one of the leading experts of leadership. Hmm. Cool. Uh, he's written for, uh, lots of books, probably close to 80 now, I think. Oh, wow. hmm. uh, he's been around for uh, quite a while. Uh, so since then, that's what's happened. Um, obviously, I stayed around. I was bouncing back and forth between New Braunfels and Seguin uh, at apartments, uh, chasing kind of you know apartment prices because you know um, it's expensive to live. Apparently, uh, something you never think about when you're a kid. Uh, but uh, so we bounced back and forth, and finally we were able to get a house uh, in New Braunfels. Uh, it was already in a developed neighborhood. Uh, neighbors are older, so we don't really have you know loud noises or anything. And you know now I've got two kids uh, and uh, a wife, and uh, you know it's great being here for us. Uh, proximity to family is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know we both obviously my parents are still in the area. Um, she her parents and her uh, siblings for the most part are in this area. Oh, wow. uh, so we got great proximity to family. Um, we have some fantastic natural resources available. The parks, uh, for the most part, are fantastic. And there's these little gyms that you'll find, like Morningside Drive Park. Mm. Uh, it actually has, like, an all-abilities playground there. Huh. Um, Where's that? Morningside so, Drive. yeah, it's all, it's actually on Morningside Drive. So if you... Um, Morningside Drive. It, yeah, it's south, like you're heading to San Antonio. So if you take the exit for um, uh, Loop 337, okay. like you're heading south on 35. Mm-hmm. But instead of turning right on 337, like you were mm-hmm. going to go sure. uh, 46 to Bernie or something like that, if you turn left mm-hmm. and you go down the road, down that road mm-hmm. until you hit uh, the T, you turn right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and that is Morningside Drive. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you turn right, you're going to pass by the um, Greater Humane Society of New Braunfels. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, down a, a couple uh, hills you're going to actually see the playground. It's next to uh, one of the schools. I think it's EHMS, but I can't remember. Okay. Um, or, and maybe I, I could be wrong, but yeah. Mm-hmm. It's down in that direction. Okay. Uh, it's nice. It's backed up against um, a wooded area, so they actually have, I think it's like a half-mile long loop that you can go through and oh, wow. go around. Uh, and so you get access to some trees and stuff like oh, that. Cool. We should check um, this out. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's very, very fun. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and playground wise, they've got two things uh, two playgrounds and a set of swings. One's an all ability playground. My son loves to go around on that. Mm-hmm. They've got some really, really fun slides and nice. stuff. Mm-hmm. Then they've got another that uh, has the old wood chip uh, okay. uh, grounding, and it's fantastic. And he likes going out there, though he did almost fall off the slide. Um, the kids falling up the slide, shocking. Well, yeah, it was a ten, it was almost a ten foot drop. Oh, you know. uh, one of my yeah, more it was fun. Uh, oh, and I could tell stories upon stories of playground accidents in Korea. Scary but moments, uh, yeah. one of the worst ones was that I was in Korea, and uh, I don't know. Lauren was probably four ish, I would guess. Uh, I'm at the top of the slide, encouraging mm-hmm. her to go down. Yeah, and I'm like just. You're just gonna go down. You just yeah. make your body long and go mm-hmm. down. Like she wouldn't go down. Like it's just it'll be okay. She goes down at the bottom, hits her feet, and does like a flip. Oh. And like lands, but lands on her face oh. and then rolls. And she had like this big cut on her face or whatever. Oh, I just felt so horrible. Like and she was okay within a short period of time, but yeah. I just was like, 
I mean, it was just like, as I saw it going wrong, it was so far out of reach. Yeah, and you're you like, couldn't. there's nothing you can do. Like, you can't move through that much yeah. matter and time and space. Like, and just that feeling of helplessness, I can still feel it in my heart <laughs> when I think about mm-hmm. it. But yeah. yeah, I had a similar thing happen with my son. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were playing at Landa Park. Mm-hmm. And they've got the little fire truck thing, and he loves mm-hmm. playing on the fire truck and oh, spinning both awesome. of the wheels yeah, and all man. that. Well, he goes to run uh, around the swing set to get mm-hmm. to the other one, mm-hmm. uh, to one of the other playgrounds that has the, the big kind of mm-hmm. rock mountain thing that right. the kids love climbing over. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we had to get him new shoes, and we hadn't been able to run to the store and get them yet. And so his shoes were a little too small, and that was impeding how he was running. Mm-hmm. And he actually fell... And so he was running, he fell, and he did, like, the full, like, loop parabola. So he, and smacked his head on the concrete. Oh, oh my man. And, like, I, I saw it happen. I was like, don't don't chase him. Don't don't let him run. And he went, and hit his head. Thank God it wasn't close to the edge. It was towards the center of the walkway. Oh. And he had turned his head at the last second. And so he got a big... He had a a, a big uh, hematoma on his head, mm. uh, you know, and we were like, he, you know, he's obviously screaming and crying and stuff. There's course, not man. blood anywhere, but you know, it immediately sure, swelling. Sure. Um, and I always feel bad because we were joking afterwards about a week later because we need to get him a haircut. Every single time that we've gone and gotten him a haircut, uh, he's always had always had bruises on his face <laughs> from something oh, like geez. where he's just fallen and he's hit his head on something or you know like it, like I'm not over here beating my kid he's he's right, literally right, right, just right, tripping right, on the right, playground right, and hitting yeah. a pole or something yeah, and, sure buddy yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure buddy yeah and so we were we were laughing that about that funny. you know we got him a haircut and then afterwards we were like you know has he ever had gone in and gotten a haircut without having bruises and we were just I, I can't remember um. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, there's lots of really, really great things about this area for uh, us to take the kids to. Mm-hmm. And obviously, uh, COVID has been a, a bit of an issue and a downer for things. Um, and our kids aren't quite old enough mm-hmm. to like go uh, tubing the river and things right. like that. Uh, we were able, you know, we have membership with DOS Rec. So we were able to get uh, Gideon, when he was about one, uh, through a swim lesson. Nice. So he does like going into the pool. He, cool. he does like the water. Um, you know, we'll see when we can do that for our daughter, but, uh, it, and Dos Rec was a, a, it's a great gym membership, um, for the value for mm-hmm. what you get. Cause mm-hmm. you get, uh, for us, we got a family membership pack and it's very inexpensive. You get access to pool, uh, basketball courts, uh, and indoor pool, indoor basketball courts, uh, and cardio area free weights and machines cool. um and for the value it, it's really really good mm. um so i i'm happy that new braunfels and i will probably upset someone me I, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well i'm happy yeah. that new braunfels invested in um mm. in that because it, it is a really good uh feature and you know there are day passes and things like that that you mm. can do um but like for working out and lifting weights and stuff, it's not bad. Obviously, there are like more specialized places, so you could go to American Fitness. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some places off of three thirty seven uh, on the south side that um, they actually do like uh, strongman uh, oh, training cool. and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, which that's a whole other thing. Mm-hmm. We were talking about sports. I like I like strongman mm-hmm. competition, but that really, yeah. completely different uh, direction. So yeah, we found a lot of value for um, what we've gotten in this area. Um, um, speaking of sports, uh-oh. what about your how you got into your particular hobby? Like so, sword fight. Yeah, yeah, sword fighting. So which I've done with him. I'll talk about my experience with it as we go. But yeah, yeah. So uh, for me, uh, when Actually, the year up, uh, the year before we moved to Texas, uh, my parents had, you know, we'd been watching Pirates of the Caribbean. And we're like, yeah, sword fighting, that's uh-huh. so cool. Uh, and my dad had done some research, and there wasn't a big, um, there there weren't like big modern Olympic fencing mm-hmm. uh, clubs there in Chattanooga or anything that we could do at the time. Uh-huh. But a rec center had um, a teacher who was offering classical fencing. Okay. Uh, the big distinction between the two is modern Olympic fencing uses electronic scoring, so there's a wire uh, that goes from the tip of the sword through the hand that goes to uh, through the mask, uh, through uh, the jacket, comes out the back, and it connects to a scoring machine. Mm-hmm. So at the end, if it gets depressed, uh, as you know, you poke someone in the face, uh, or their mask specifically, <laughs> you know, uh, a light will go off, right? Mm-hmm. 
and that's who they how they determine the, mm. the victor. And there's other rules, but mm. uh, classical fencing they don't have the electronic scoring. So this is stuff that's like basically pre fifties. Uh, well, maybe pre sixties. Just gonna go till first blood. Uh, I wish no. <laughs> uh, I, I joke about that. Uh, there are people that do that, but uh, uh, so the classical fencing actually it's basically the divergence. So modern Olympic fencing. Uh, took the electronic scoring, I want to say in like the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. Classical fencing uh, basically tries to keep it the way it was before electronic scoring. Uh, and so it still relies a lot on um, the the rules of engagement that they have, like right away for the foil and things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, and having uh, specific human judges there that are mm -hmm. watching the actions take place. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you do see some people, they'll do a bit of... Uh, it is to uh, like kind of a first blood thing that it's not as popular, but they'll they actually have these spe special tips that have like four prongs, mm. and you'll fence and it, it's not deep enough that it's like you're getting stabbed by a needle, but it's enough that it'll draw blood. Oh wow! Mm. And so they'll they'll do a fencing thing. Mm. It's huh. first first person that you can see oh. blood. Um, oh, wow. Uh, again, not not incredibly popular. I would not That's recommend that and, <laughs> unless you have some experience already. Um, I feel like I'm ready. I watch Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you watch it, you know, twenty, thirty times. You'll, you'll, you'll pretty you'll sure good, Orlando right? Bloom, everything he did is right on point. Right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I, especially him fighting a squid face guy. Like, yeah. that that yeah. that was history, right? How could you not draw? You know, like proper conclusions from that. Uh, exactly. Proper technique. I don't know. Um, and so we, we did classical fencing for a year. Moved here. Uh, the closest fencing clubs that were offering public training were too far mm -hmm. uh, from us at the time. Uh, and so I just kind of let it slide. Uh, and then eventually, you know, when I was a teenager, um, uh, I was a teenager, but uh, when I was about 15, 16, uh, we finally got um, like a, a cable package that let us watch uh, like Spike TV and so we started watching UFC more and mm -hmm. other MMA so I was watching Bellator and things like that and mm -hmm. eventually I started like getting on YouTube and watching Pride and then I was mm -hmm. watching all sorts of other like esoteric things so I was mm -hmm. um, really started getting into martial arts a lot then um, you know even through college I wound up running a podcast for about a year uh, that for at least half of that uh, was sponsored by Alienware which is the a crazy situation mm. um, and around like I guess 2014 maybe it was 2013 uh, one of my favorite online karate magazines I say that it, it's bloodyelbow.com oh I uh, read bloody elbow yeah, yeah there you go yeah. Um, so they posted some articles uh, and I, my thing that I always loved was reading the history of how mm -hmm. these arts developed and the interactions between cultures. Yeah, Bloody Elbow is like surprisingly good for its name, but yeah. It is, yeah, yes. like, so, like, it, They go it fairly absolutely... in-depth on a few things and it's like, that's why I like them is every now and then they'll have those in-depth articles that you're describing. Yes. There's the day-to-day, -day, but then every now and then it'll be this mm -hmm. really deep look at something mm -hmm. and it's like, they actually do their homework, you know, yes. like it's a well-researched thing you're like, you're like, damn, I didn't know that. Like, you know, yes, so. and uh, so I would, I would like spend way too many hours a day reading things, and then like they posted this article, and it was like the ancient long sword, European long sword. I was like, what? That's cool. Mm. You know, it's like, and they were talking about the manuals, and mm. then they were like dropped in videos of people hitting each other with swords, and I was like, oh, this is a thing. Mm. And ever since then, I had it in the back of my head. Mm. Um, and I started reaching out to people who were in that community, and I was talking to people, trying to figure out how could I get involved, how could I mm. start picking it up. Um, and nothing really worked out until uh, a guy commented in a group, and it was kind of serendipitous because I literally joined that group that day, mm -hmm. right? And he commented in a group and said, hey, I just moved to New Braunfels. Uh, mm. Does anyone want to you know, meet up and train? I was like, well... I was living in Seguin at the time. I was like, I'm, I'm down the road. I'm down to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So like a kind of awkward situation. Let me meet, you know, let me meet someone face to face in a public setting right, to make right. sure you know if if I'm getting kidnapped, I, I can scream <laughs> loudly enough that mm -hmm. someone else will be in the area. Um, luckily, it didn't it didn't work out that way. He he was a great guy, uh, fantastic, and that was when I really first started uh, getting into it. Mm -hmm. um, within a year, I had bought a sword. I had bought the manual uh, that we were studying from. Uh, and I don't want to say, oh, the rest is history, because there's all sorts of stuff that's happened since then. Um, but, yeah, I mean, basically, since then, I've, I've continued to buy swords. I've gotten into 
uh, other things. So there's the long sword, obviously, but I have a, a side sword, which is a proto rapier. Mm. Uh, so you know, if you guys have ever seen Zoro. Uh, mm. Zoro has a rapier, and just, that's basically how it is. Mm. Um, I've gotten into sabers. I've gotten into um, all sorts of really really fun things. Um, what was it that we used the one night? We had the bucklers. Yeah, so those sword little, and those little bitty shields or whatever. Yeah. What was the sword then? Was that so a saber? That, or? Well, that that was an arming sword. I just don't remember. I knew we had a smaller sword than the, those big mm-hmm. long sword. You could never work that one handed. Like, forget yeah, I, and well, you there's some that you could like. I actually just got one late last year uh, as a Christmas bonus. That um, it is short. It it's longer than the ones that you were talking about for sword and buckler, mm-hmm. but it's weighted in such a way that you absolutely can. Huh. And of course, it's got a longer handle, so you know. Mm-hmm. That that's a bit of an issue, but yeah, sword and buckler as well, mm. uh, which is uh, again like there's all these different weapon systems that people have written about mm. for hundreds of years. Um, sadly, World War One killed a lot of them, mm. uh, and so the, there's been a lot of people who've been trying to reconstruct it um, mm. to the point where basically the the modern what they call historical European martial arts movement, uh, honestly, Hema. Yeah. yeah, or HEMA, yeah. Um, it is. Um, more of like a more reconstructionist in nature because mm-hmm. uh, there's not a living lineage. Everyone who learned how to do that has died. Right, uh, right, right. And they didn't pass it down. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not like judo or jujitsu or Brazilian right. jujitsu where you've got this living lineage, right? Mm-hmm. Like you've got people now who can say, well, I trained under, uh, you know, Hickson who trained under. Uh, Helio, H- Helio, basically. Who trained under uh, Count Mega. Right. Yeah. You know? yeah. And Tecano, he, Tecano, like, right? And like, and then you could go yeah. even further back, right? Mm. You don't have that. Mm. Just a lot of them died in World War One, sure. and a lot of them afterwards uh, just were not physically capable to train. Mm. Um, and so, I, I I'm gonna say that's a very American centric thing. I'm mm. sure there are some people who uh, in Italy, for instance, that they say that they've continued to practice uh, like distrezza. Or something like that, and I'm sure I'm probably using the wrong language for that because people <laughs> get a, they get very uh, uppity about that. Uh, but there are some people who claim to have living lineages. Mm. Um, I don't know the veracity of that, but um, on my side, like it's just reconstruction. Sure. Um, and cool thing, there's lots of tournaments uh, that mm. take place. Um, at least you know when there's not a global pandemic mm. going on. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty fun. I've competed at a couple tournaments. Um, I've done okay. Uh, I'm not the the best tool in the shed by any means, but um, I'm competent. I would say, I, I'd argue that's the most important thing. I, mean, I found it a lot of fun. Um, now I'm like always running the gym, so finding the time to pop, jump off to do stuff like that, mm-hmm. and especially I don't favor a lot of extra hobbies that use my body too much yeah. just because that's like my body's a little maxed out with all the coaching responsibilities and uh but it was super fun it was it was for me reminded me a lot of boxing mm-hmm. which i've done a fair amount of like boxing has that um so in jujitsu there are no feints like in jujitsu everything i do is it has to be a credible threat to garner a reaction and then when you go to boxing there's all this fainting that you can do, which is a lot of fun. And I felt like going up the swords, it was that extra level of fainting because you're even further away now mm-hmm. to where, like, if I make a move to the right, by the time you move in response to that, if I can come back around to the left, it's quite a, an advantageous situation. Mm-hmm. I always, I, that's one of the things I always enjoyed about boxing is that, like, you can faint. In jiu-jitsu, there's, a lot of beginners will faint. And they think that'll work. It doesn't work. Like yeah. <laughs> so people are just too close. The the level of reaction is never much enough. Threats should be credible. Um, and and I am just doing that thing. I just have a response to your response, mm-hmm. basically. But yeah, once you're back out at that big range, you're getting back into that fainting game. And there's just a lot of like boxing. It's like you could be pretty experienced and do a right move, but still get hit by someone just. Oh, yeah being quick or being wrong or just you know it's a big blade coming at you like it's uh, oh yeah. yeah and and there's so much that goes into that too you mm-hmm. know and uh especially when when we talk fainting because mm-hmm. uh one of my favorite uh, i'll just say combos that i've ever seen um was this one where a guy came in with a horizontal strike and he was crossing his arms mm-hmm. right 
Now the what they this is called a sphere cow. So they cross their arms and it's a horizontal strike and they're they're usually trying to hit people on the side of their head. Mm-hmm. Right? That's the idea. Well, uh the common thing is to do what they call a spirit copter. So you do one, someone responds to it, and you just keep twisting and untwisting your arms until you hit them, hmm. yeah. right? And so they, they joke, oh, it's a spirit copter. Well, this guy, um, it's so ingrained in people that the response is, okay, they're going to do this, so I've got to immediately do this, and then I'll be able to counter. Okay. Well, this guy hit, he, he goes for the spirit cow. The guy stops it, and he shifts immediately to the other side because he knows, oh, it's a spirit copter. The guy's going to hit me. And the guy had started bringing his sword back, Mm -hmm. right? So it looked by all means and and intents that he was going to do finish and keep doing the copter. Well, then he cut normally at at a horizontal without crossing his arms on the same side that he had initially attacked at um, and got the guy uh, in his torso. Uh, and you see those kinds of fainting combos like that, and I was just like, I watched that, and I'm like, God, I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's like, yeah. oh, that was so beautiful. Mm. The timing is perfect, wow. and mm. uh, yeah, there's some very, very impressive stuff that people can do, and mm. you know, honestly, it it's still really young, I would say. So like MMA mm. back in the 90s, right? Yeah. That's about where I would say it is. Sure. You've got people who um, – will stick to certain disciplines or they'll pull things from others Mm -hmm. and you're kind of starting to see you're kind of starting to see some people melding things Mm -hmm. um but a lot of people are still very much it's still a you know a stylistic kind of thing in my Mm -hmm. opinion and i'm sure if any of my hema friends listen to this they'll you know i'll get a bunch of angry messages so (laughs) Mm -hmm. i don't care uh (laughs) where do you practice and also if there's anybody who's listening was interested how can they go about it so uh we've been blessed to uh get um get connected with sport holla nb mm. uh and uh local crossfit gym right off of walnut uh fantastic location and so we're going to be uh training there uh tuesdays mm-hmm. uh once a week 7 to 9 p.m has to be that late because um of my son Mm-hmm. And <laughs> he he likes swords, and so I'll I'll take him with me. Nice. But uh, we'll be practicing uh, once a week, seven to nine. Uh, it uh, we were formerly known as New Braunfels Historical Fencing Club. Um, uh, the other thing that COVID has brought on was like expenses rack up, and some things get cut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was able to partner with a friend of mine uh, from Austin who runs Academy of Western Martial Arts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and so if you uh, look online, I believe the website's academyofwma.com, uh, the New Braunfels location, uh, Sport Hall NB, Tuesday, 7 to 9, starting February 2nd. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't guarantee that you'll be able to hit people first day with steel swords because <laughs> uh, we like to make sure people are, are competent before mm-hmm. we start putting them in potentially dangerous situations. Mm. Um, but same logic here, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I've I've been in a place before where someone who should not have had a sword had a sword and it hurt someone. And Shocking! Like, yeah, okay. yeah, surprise, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. So uh, competence matters, is what I'll say. Mm. Uh, so that we'll start practice uh, here pretty soon next week, actually. Uh, and I'm really stoked about that. I'm I've mm. gotten some more gear while mm. COVID has been a thing, and mm. I can't wait to to put it on and start uh, playing around have some good time um and if uh you don't want to if you want to send an email uh i've got the email new Braunfels at academy of wma uh, dot com we'll Great. put those links all mm-hmm. in the, we'll put it all in the, the show notes and everything so sounds really fun really yeah, and uh, by all means, right? You guys are welcome. I know that uh, class runs. Um, right, I think the time late. is yeah. Sure. Always, uh, um, fun stuff always happens in the evening, and, and that's yeah. where we are yeah. teaching. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, if you guys have an off day or you mm-hmm. know, uh, definitely feel free to come by. It, it's really fun, I, and obviously minimally, I'd like to watch. Oh yeah, it does that's look. Fun. Yeah, yeah, it seems really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it 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 is, and I'm sure that you guys can attest to this when it comes to like jujitsu. Like, the more you know about something, the more excited you get when you watch that thing. Right, right. And, like, yeah. it, once you start to pick up some of the things that are going on, you're like, oh, he's doing this, or mm-hmm. oh, she's doing that, you know? Uh, and, yeah, it's great. That Although was, I have a... Yeah, sorry. That was my recent experience with uh, watching MMA. Mm. I was 
talking to him uh, the other day, just the, not the, the recent fight with Conor, but the previous fights that uh, we watched with, um, it was between two women fighters. And was then, it Sarah McMahon and, uh, do you remember was it a different fight card? It was a different fight card prior. Yeah, I don't prior. remember the name, but I remember yeah. exactly when woman just like took the back, like mm-hmm. using exactly the technique that we were actually mm-hmm. teaching our kids and everything yeah. that week, and then just like did the real naked joke. Or also just remember watching UFC. I showed Kaylee UFC 1 recently. Oh, yeah. mm. it, oh, right, it's right, like right. straight out of our mm. gym. Like yes. right. every, When you're seeing just that pure jiu-jitsu against other, which essentially they're fighting untrained people. Like they're yeah. trained in a different discipline, but at that time, none of those guys knew anything about jujitsu. Yeah. So you just see that king's game mm. every single mm-hmm. time. Take down, mm-hmm. pass to mount, mm-hmm. submission from mount, but the guy rolls over rear naked choke. Yeah. That's like ninety five percent of the Gracie challenge matches. Is yeah. When you face someone that doesn't know what's going on, that's what just plays mm-hmm. out almost mm-hmm. every single time. Mm-hmm. Like you just those people are entering a whole new world, and they've. They have no defenses <laughs> for yeah. any of it. Like, it just, if it's, you've never seen it before, especially, like, jiu-jitsu is, like, completely like a tornado coming through you. Like, yeah. so there's no, yeah, yeah. Do you feel like watching uh, sword fighting in a movie now is, like, has it been ruined for you because of our, all of it? Uh, so, to a degree, um, it's actually interesting because my... The, my diploma that I got from the university is actually dramatic media. So it's combination okay. of theater and film. So I, I uh, am a student of the arts, as mm-hmm. some people like to say. So I can appreciate a good sword fight, even if it's absolutely, like, uh, completely not martially sound. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, there are certain things that will irritate me about, about sure. stuff that I see. Um, but I haven't, like, you know... Outside of one thing, uh, you know, I haven't, like, gone, what the hell were they doing over there? Pardon my language. Um, but, yeah, I, there's, for the most part, I'm, it, I I look at that and I go, it's to tell a story, mm-hmm. right? And if they sure. tell a story well, then I don't care. Sure. Right? No, I totally get it's what you mean. About um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Now, admittedly, there are definitely, like, movies where it's just, here's a sword fight and it doesn't do anything outside of these characters need to have a sword fight. And it's mm. like, oh, okay, that was dumb. Like, right. you, you just shouldn't have had a sword fight. Have them, like, argue. Mm. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, sword fights, for the most part, I still enjoy quite a fair amount, number of them. Uh, some decent ones that I've seen um, in, like, the last year, you know, you've got stuff like The Witcher has some pretty good sword fights. Mm. Yeah, it wasn't too Netflix. bad. I was watching that, yeah. Uh, they've had some pretty good ones. And, honestly, there's spinning stuff, and, you know, that doesn't really work. Um but it was very, very fun uh, to watch. Really, really nice. Uh, there were some stuff from... Uh, some people will probably not be happy with me saying this, but like, uh, what is it? The King? Or the the movie that was about Henry V that came out featuring Timothy Chalamet. I don't or know. Chalamet. Sure. It's on Netflix, too. Sword fighting. Is actually uh, yeah, they good. had some sword fighting in there that uh, I enjoyed. They had mm. like a armored v. armored um, mm. uh, duel showdown. Mm. Uh, I enjoyed it. It told a story. Uh, was probably not incredibly historically accurate, but it told the story and I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those are uh, two mm. things I um, r- recently off the top of my head that I've watched and I've gone, yeah, I like the sword fights in this because it was nice. See, for me, I'm like, at this point, I can almost, the only action sequences I can almost only enjoy are like Marvel. <laughs> so I'm just like, the dude's got a flying hammer, so yeah. I can just suspend all disbelief about mm-hmm. everything, and just I'm like, ah, whatever. Like you know, yeah. none of this ob- obeys the laws of physics, so mm-hmm. I can just enjoy it and I sit back. Whereas half the time when I'm watching something, I'm just like, that, that kick was too slow go that, that way. Yeah. Like <laughs> that would not work that way. Like just some stuff that Hollywood has for ideas. I like when they use someone like Gina Carano though, or something mm-hmm. like yes. she did that action movie, Haywire. And- yeah, she, mm. that oh, yeah, was, that so, was good. so good. Like, and that was probably about the best fight choreography I've seen. Like, she throws like proper leg kicks into mm-hmm. Ewan McGregor that are like, yeah. I'm sure if that w- I don't know if that was Ewan McGregor or like a stunt, stunt double, but whoever that was did not walk right for yeah. the rest of the day. Like, <laughs> those are real leg kicks. You're like, oh, that yeah, that's what would mess mm-hmm. people up. And like, she's doing good jujitsu and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, it looks pretty incredible. I'm actually excited for. Oh, I don't know what the name of the movie is, but the 
movie, the trailer that yeah, you Yeah, the dude that was from Boonda- Boondock Saints. One of the dudes there, Sean something. Sean Flannery, I think. Sean Flannery has a new movie. It's out on, I think you can get get it on Amazon. He's a legit black belt. Yes. According to Henry yeah. Akins, he's a legit black belt. And uh, apparently it's good. Some some people we know have already seen it. And so the jiu-jitsu actually looks, you know, really real and good. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of excited to see that. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I like when we're talking like... Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, two movies that really stood out to me. One was, and you guys may not like this, but I like it. It was Red Belt. It was a David Mame film. I know of it. Yeah. Uh, Joel uh, Giafor uh, is the mm. main character. He plays a, a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu gym owner, um, mm. and uh, you know stuff happens. And there's a there. I thought it was a pretty great story there's not a, a whole lot of fighting in it but okay. the fights that were there i enjoy hmm. um and this other one actually has uh oh, god um it's I, the movie i think is called flashpoint it's a, a chinese film hmm. featuring the guy who played it man okay. um uh, from donnie the, donnie Yuan or something like uh, yeah, that I don't donnie know. yen donnie yen yeah uh and he actually had um he he went through some MMA and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu training prior to that, mm-hmm. uh, and one of the like the I guess the the ending fight scene that you know lasts like five minutes, mm-hmm. um, uh, it was really really impressive, and he was doing some fantastic transitioning mm-hmm. between like an armbar to a triangle and oh, okay. uh, some really 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 smooth moves, and mm-hmm. obviously it's been influenced a little bit because it's sure. Hong Kong cinema kind sure, of stuff, sure. uh, but I really enjoyed the the fight scenes in that. I don't know where you can get that. I had to buy Red Bell from Hastings mm. before it went down. Um, I'll throw one more movie out there, and I guess we should probably start to wrap up here. But uh, my my favorite inclusion of jiu-jitsu in a movie is not even Haywire, but uh, Green Room. Yes. There's just one character oh, in that that, that can he can do he he can just do jiu-jitsu, and it's like that is what jiu-jitsu would look like if you actually had like really people fighting and stuff like that. Is mm-hmm. he just he just handles people like it just comes up a couple times in the film where it's like side guys decide to go hands on and he just he's like all right now i can break your arm like and yeah. it's just like <laughs> crack you know and it's like that that's pretty much what it would look like if you mm-hmm. start going hands on with people that are actually trained you know and i've had to give that experience to a number of people over the years and usually mm-hmm. i'm just like the, like people see stuff and they're like why do they tap and I, that's usually the question like, i'll get at a hurts. party or something and i'm like <laughs> I'm going to do this really slow. We're going to show it to you. And then people are like, oh, my God. Like, that would actually break my arm. Like, yeah. that isn't, like, theoretical. Like, right. I can it's, feel my arm actual, breaking. Yeah. You know, you're like, oh, whoa. Like, you know, and that, yeah. So that's that's always kind of fun. But, yeah, Green Room's, it's a good movie otherwise. But, uh, yeah, there's just that minor. It's really, mm-hmm. like, a 5% inclusion in the film. Yeah. It's just the one guy's, like, he does jujitsu. They just mention it that he does competitions mm-hmm. and just a couple times where people go hands on with him and he just hands. does what yeah. it looks exactly like what I would expect it to look like mm-hmm. there's no it's not flashy just mm-hmm. it's like oh yeah that's what happened so mm-hmm. yeah. yeah oh yeah oh god so many movies so like if we're talking about movies for sword fights the one that everyone always recommends is The Duelists okay uh, and it's about uh, these two I think they're both French officers but they're these two mm-hmm. officers in like the Napoleonic era uh, that they started dueling each other and it's like the chronicles of their meetings right? mm. and I think they meet like three or four times throughout the movie mm. uh, and it, it's it's actually really really good um, and uh, I wish I could remember the names of the directors and the lead actors because they're, mm. they're actually really good actors too um, but the duelist is the one that everyone recommends mm. for like legitimate sword fighting mm. and if you just want to have a good time uh princess bride no, you know, mm. not a lot beats Dude. that sword fight frankly but, but it's awesome but, yeah. yeah it's awesome conan the barbarian just throw that out there hey you know amazing. what i always laugh fun fact about conan the barbarian arnold had to not lift as much on his chest so that he could actually hold a sword out in front of him Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. Wow. Like his, his chest was literally so, so big oh, that he had funny. to work that's that out way less sure. so that it would reduce in size just so he could hold the sword out huh. in front of him. That's hilarious. Oh, wow. Uh, that's so crazy. Yeah, that was back when he was all roided out and just gigantic. Like, yeah. He looks so crazy. Like, there's uh, some of those scenes where he's just flexing with the sword and it's like his muscles have muscles like yes. his muscles are growing and like <laughs> could flex and lift something on their own like mm-hmm. like my god but yeah. yeah 
Well, anyways, Connor, it's good to have you on the show, and uh, we'll put the links in the, the show notes, but just repeat them real quick for people at the end. Like, what was your email? Uh, New Braunfels at academyofwma.com. Okay. And, and the website's incredibly difficult. It's academyofwma.com. <laughs> academyofwma.com. All right. Thanks for coming on. Thank, Thank you. you.